I would just want to give my appreciation for this woman, for how well she's mentored me as well as the other girls here. I, speak for, I feel like I speak on behalf of all of us, like you're doing such an amazing job in mentoring us, loving us, tough loving us at the same time. But I just would love to introduce Michelle Watson. Praise. Now you guys are making me nervous. <laughs> Praise God. So we make so much noise for me that I'm a flesh. I'm, there's only a limit to what I can do or say. So how much more do we give to God, our creator, our king of kings, our lord of lords, our beginning, our end, our first, our last, our Alpha, our Omega. Amen. We give God glory. So Father God, I thank you. I give you all the glory and I give you all the honor, Lord, Father God, because I stand here not by my own power. I stand here not of my own accord, Lord, Father God. And so I thank you for your strength. And Father God, I empty me of me so that, Father God, it's all of you none of me all of you lord we give you all the praise and all the honor in jesus name amen i'm not going to delay because of time and we have a lot to go through amen but i firstly want to thank my awesome elder and pastor aren't they beautiful and handsome i'm waiting for babies because i know the baby is going to be double beautiful and powerful amen I told them to adopt me, but they're delaying, so, you know, somebody else is going to have to adopt me, but thank you for the privilege to stand here. And it's weird, because as I started crafting this message, God was just giving me different things and downloads and downloads, and everywhere I turned, somebody else was touching point on it. And then this morning, as I was making my way, well, this afternoon, I think TJ in the, in the first service, FG service, it was weird because he was then touching on some of the very first things, even the same scripture that was going to be touching. And I was like, God, okay, this is confirmation. And so we're talking about reset. Reset. And when I looked at one of the meanings to, of reset is to set, adjust, or fix in a new or different way. And the, the first time I heard about Reset, the, the first Bible verse that popped into my head, funny enough, was the same one that FG is using, and it's Isaiah 43, 19. And it's talking about a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? A new thing. And I love what TJ said this morning because he was talking about the fact that many times we go into the new year and we say, we are going to do a new thing. But what the scripture actually says, it says, I will make a way in the wilderness and the rivers. It didn't say you will make a way, it said I will make a way. But I really zoned in on this new thing. And you know 2 Corinthians 5.17, it tells us that all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. All things have passed away. And all things have become new. And... One of the scriptures that I had that, funny enough, that's what TJ touched on, was Mark, Mark 2, 22. And it was talking about the old wine being poured into, sorry, the new wine being poured into the old wine skin. And it really made me think about stepping out of an old year and going into a new year. And what we tend to do at times is we, end, we exit the old year, we enter into the new year, but we still want to carry the old wine with us to be poured into the new year. The old traits and the old things. So we want everything to be new, but we don't want to let go of the things of the old. And so you're pulling forward something that is new and trying to still hold on at the same time to the thing that is old, that is pulling you back. So as a new creation, the old things should not be actually taking possession. Because if you're saying you want a new year, 
then your habits should also be new. You can't just say it with your mouth. Oh, I'm going to have a new year, but your habits remain the same. Your mentality remains the same. Resetting is about doing a new thing, making a change. And so when talking about resetting, that then means we then should be making a change from the things of the 2021 in order to have a different 2022. About two weeks ago, Omar spoke about discipling the tongue. And I don't know how many people were intentional about that. If you just said, hallelujah, good word, and you left, entering back into gossiping as you exited the door. Because you see, the same language, and I don't mean your dialect. I'm not talking about my patwa or your roba or any other dialect. I'm talking about the language that you were speaking and you allowed to govern you in 2021 cannot then be the same language that is governing you in 2022. If the language you spoke didn't get you anywhere in 2021, what are the chances it's going to get you somewhere in 2022? Then Colin spoke about resetting perspectives. And he spoke about how we can get change in crisis. And we know that because we go through the tests and it's the tests that give us the testimony. We also learned that perspective is the way us as individuals, how we see the world. It is dependent on our morals, our beliefs, our experiences. Perspective takes into account and is formed based on our current state of mind. Proverbs 23, 7, it says, as someone thinks within himself, so he is. And so when I thought about it, and when I was listening to Omar's preaching and listening to Colin's preaching, what dawned on me is that in order for you to speak differently, in order for you to have a different perspective, then you need to have a different mindset. You cannot have the same mindset and be expecting to have different things. And it brought me, I don't know for what reason, to computers. Now I want you to stay with me on this. There is two ways of refreshing a computer or a laptop. There is the restart. So for me, I would go to my Microsoft icon, I would click on the restart button, and it would restart. Now the thing with restarting is that it means you're asking your operating system to start the applications that was already running. But then when you're rebooting, which the action to reboot is to forcefully hold down my power button and forcefully cause my laptop to restart, what I am now asking my laptop to do is unload all device drivers, close all programs, and restart the operating system. Hence why rebooting is one of the first troubleshooting ways they will try to resolve a problem on your device, even your mobile phone. I hope you're staying with me. So for many of us, at times, we restart a new year with all these massive, great plans and aspirations, some of them that was on the list the year before, and we start a new year saying we're going to change New Year's resolution. Anybody that's like me, you're going to the gym now, you know, you're eating clean, you're doing all these things, right? Because you want to become a better version of yourself. But the problem is, what we've done, we've done a restart. We've done a restart. And so even though we have these plans, we move into 2022 on a restart with the old applications running. We didn't do a reboot. We didn't delete the gossip. We didn't delete the fornication. We didn't delete the hatred. We didn't delete the bitterness. We didn't delete the comparisons. Because what we do is, we go in with a plaster and we put it over the wound instead of dealing with what caused the wound in the first place. Because as I mentioned before, to reboot is to forcefully shut down programs currently running. And there are some things that's running in our life that needs to be forcefully shut down in order for you to get the better version of yourself. Matthew eleven twelve it says, From the days of John the Baptist until now, 
the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence and the violent take it by force. Why am I saying this? Just like the computer that is restarted and not, re re not rebooted, some of us have entered 2022 with numerous programs still running. The unforgiveness and the comparison, as I mentioned before. And guess what that does? Just like the laptop, it starts to lag productivity. You can't get to be productive because of all that's going up in here. Too many programs opened up on the system. So the computer is moving at a slow pace. A bit like what Nizar mentioned, slothfulness. Some of us are carrying virus. I'm not talking about COVID. Some of us are carrying virus. The virus that is telling us, I'm not good enough. I'm worthless. I am not worthy. And guess what? Just like the laptop, it's causing us to glitch. Yeah, we start glitching because we take a step to do something and we stop because we're like, I'm not good enough. Glitch. We take a step. I need to, I need to do this. I've been saying I'm going to do it for years. You start moving, then you stop, glitch, just like the laptop. Some of us, it's the software that needs updating. And that's why I was laughing when Niz said it. It's the mediocre thinking, that stagnancy. So your laptop, when it needs updating, there's certain new programs that is running that it can't run because it's not been updated. And there's certain things that you desire to do and you still can't do it because we're still waiting on the update. I'm not going to delay. Let me move forward. We need to overcome by force. And I love the fact that Niza said enough is enough because it needs to be intentional. Intentional. You cannot want to stand as a child of God, but still dabbling in the things of the enemy. And that's what's taken me to my topic for today. For those that travel on the underground, you would have heard this announcement mind the gap and the anchor text for today is Romans 12 from verse 1 to 2 Romans 12 verse 1 to 2 and it says I appeal to you therefore brothers by the mercies of God to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. I was reading the other day and I came across a translation by a man called J.B. Phillips. The same of Romans 12, 1, 2, and he broke it down. He says, with eyes wide open to the mercies of God, I beg you, my brothers, as an act of intelligent worship, to give God your bodies as a living sacrifice, consecrated to him and acceptable by him. Don't let the world around you squeeze you into its own mold, but let God remold your minds from within so that you may prove in practice, in the way you act and speak, that the plan of God for you is good, meets all his demands, and moves towards the goal of true maturity. I beseech you, I appeal. This is evident that Paul was asking and pleading that we follow along in God's will, to make a better choice, to live for him, and not to live in the way as the world. It says, by the mercies of God. So he's reminding us that we need to do this thing in a way of re not even repaying. Because to be honest, we're not repaying God. By living good, you're not repaying God. Because whether you, there's a, there's a verse in the Bible that tells us that whether we serve him or we don't serve him, what, what, be what benefit is to God? It's a benefit to our own selves. And Paul writes that as the Jewish people offered killed animals as sacrifices to God, as Christians, we should instead offer ourselves, our bodies, our mind. Because sometimes we tend to play as if the mind is not a part of our body. In other words, the only rational response to God's mercy in giving us eternal life is to give him our lives as a sacrifice. 
But it's funny how many people want to work for God in order to be seen, but you don't want to submit to him. It's okay for you to be seen on the pulpit, but my life should not submit to him. <laughs> Hence, this is why the renewal of your mind is extremely important. This is where it all begins. When your mind is changed, your life will be transformed. Now, I spoke about mind the gap. Now, when, we, when that... When that announcement was created it was created because new trains came onto the, tra the, the train line and there was a gap between the train and the platform and many people used to run on that train oblivious to the gap that was there right and they're rushing because they want to catch the train they want to be fast but they end up being delayed because they missed the gap they missed the gap and some people actually fell in there some people's foot got caught in there now, it's very funny that how many times we start the year about wanting to fix all the things on the outward appearance, but we don't take the time to fix one of the things that is the most important, the mind. And everything else that we're saying that we're going to do and carry out needs the mind. But that's the last place that we address, right? What would we call it? Like a, a Ford Cartina engine in a Ferrari body. Because that's what we want to do. It is therefore crucial to have an awareness of what is going on with your mind. The mind being a gap that needs filling, and many times we don't pay attention to that gap. The thing is, we hear the word on the prayer calls, and we hear Oma and Rona, and everybody come up here and preach, and we're like, oh, he's coming from my edges, but has he come for your mind? Has he come for your mind? It's good for us to leave and say, yes, he's come for our edges. But what's happening with the mind? We don't want just a feel-good moment. A feel-good moment is not going to cut it. It's not going to get you where you need to be spiritually. It's not going to get you there. Trust me, you're not doing all my run a favor because you clapping and oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not, that's not what they want. They want to see the transformation. They want to see the difference. And so it is crucial to have an awareness of what is going on in your mind. You need to be sensitive, alert, always discerning. 1 Peter 5, 8. 1 Peter 5, 8. It says, be sober-minded. Be vigilant. Niz spoke about the fact of just being lazy and just sleeping off. The enemy is poking you with a stick and you're just there turning onto the other side. He pokes you on the other side, you turn to the other side. And man's just there poking you, you're just turning. He said, be sober-minded, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom to devour. Be sober-minded, meaning to be serious, sensible, and composed. Some of us are too relaxed, taking warfare for chicken and chips. Be on your guard at all times. It's very easy to go outside and get chicken and chips in England. Very easy. And that's how we take our Christian life, too easy. Romans 8, 6, it says, For to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. The Apostle Paul said it in, in Romans 12, 2, he says, We are transformed by the renewing of the mind. And many of us think that our life is actually transformed, and then we renew the mind. You transform your life first, and then you renew the mind. That's back to front. It's actually the other way around. When we were born... Take note of this. Unless you were the stubborn babies, I'm not calling you stubborn if, if this is you, but if you're a baby that came out with, anybody came out with your feet out? Do you know? Everybody came out with their heads out? Um, I see me, you're raising your hand. <laughs> Most of us came out with our heads out first, right? The midwives in the house, am I speaking logic? Heads first. You're in an enclosed area. I want you to stay with me here. You're in an enclosed area. Sometimes that area can be a bit uncomfortable. Right? What was the first thing that came out of that uncomfortable place? It was your head. And so there's some situations that you're going through. Your head, your mind is the first place that you need to be looking to. That's the first place that came out, your head. So why is it that you're thinking that your foot, your, the rest of your body needs to be dealt with first and then you'll deal with the mind after? Many say they want to be delivered. But truly, are you just saying it with your mouth? Is your mouth saying you're delivered? 
But yet when you come into church, the first thing that you're eyeing is Miss Maple's husband sitting over the right. The first thing that you're eyeing is the sister that is on the left. But yet you're saying, oh, I want to be delivered from adultery. But you don't come into church with the intention and say, you know what, God, I want the pastor to speak into my situation today. You've already programmed. When you're looking in the mirror, I'm dressing because I want him to see me. So I'm making sure that when I enter the church, I'm sitting in front of him. Where is your mind? I came across an article while studying written by a pastor. He said, he said, you're not a sick person trying to get healed. You're a healthy person fighting sickness. And I, I, I want you to look at this because Colin spoke about perspective. Before I go there, he says, when you, when you experience deliverance, your mind has to do a switch from a slave to a son and from a slave to a soldier, one that fights, right? So that even if you get the same attack, because they do come, they do come, right? You see them differently, like Colin said, about different perspective and different position, positions, right? So here he's saying, if you are sick, don't see yourself as a sick, but you're a healed person, you're a healthy person fighting sickness. You're not a bound person trying to get free. You're a free person fighting bondage. You're not a sinner trying to get holy. You're a saint fighting sin. If you are declaring that your steps are ordered by the Lord, then shouldn't your mind also be ordered by the Lord? Shouldn't your mind be also ordered by the Lord? And if you were to get a pen, I don't know if there's any part on me that is white, but like Darren's wearing white and black. If you were to get a pen and mark on Darren's black trousers, would it be easy for you to see that mark? But if you got a pen and you wrote on his white top, would it be easy for you to see it? What's the difference? One's black, one's white. What's the difference with the mind? Some of the mind, there's too much filthiness going on. So even when God is speaking, you can't hear him. Even when he's making that mark, you can't see it because your mind is already plugged in with a lot of negativity. And so we need to empty the wine skin so that the new wine can be entered in. There's a few pointers that I want to share with you in regards to minding the gap. One, stop waiting for an outside miracle to change your mind. 1 Peter 1.13 Therefore, preparing your minds for action and being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. The change that you are waiting for will never come until you really get rid of the chaos that is playing around in your mind. And you need to fill it with God's word. Renewing of the mind will never work if we continue to believe and give excuses. Do you know the amount of times I have said to myself, the reason why, you know, I'm saying this negativity is because I've gone through abuse. Or, you know, this is how I was born. Oh, I went through a hard life. Have you ever stopped and said to yourself, maybe the reason why you're so negative, if your life is going through all of these situations is because you are actually carrying a negative mind. I had to realize at a point that I was actually carrying a negative mind. And so I didn't have any expectancy of anything good. So why would I be surprised when nothing good is not happening? You see, you want to walk around with your mind the way it is and expect beauty to shine through it. It's a bit like we equate ourselves with diamonds because we say the diamonds come from the dirt. So somehow we think that with our dirty minds that something good and sparkling is going to come from it. It's not possible. The change won't happen by being an altar addict. And what I mean by being an altar addict, I'm not, I'm not knocking anyone from keep coming to the altar, but this is not a quick fix place for me to just come and get my taste and go back the same and come and get my taste like an addict. When you come here, you have to come here with the heart of being intentional. I'm not saying don't come to the altar when an altar call is called, but I'm saying that when you've come to this altar, 
And if you're praying against certain things that the enemy is doing or trying to instigate in your life, you need to step away, just like Omar said today, being intentional, knowing that when I leave this place, devil, you are not going to get my life. If you come to this place and you say, I'm coming here because I know that I'm feeling suicidal tendencies, you need to step away and tell the devil when he comes that, listen, I'm a child of the king. My life doesn't belong to you. And so you have to be intentional. When you come here and you're, there are certain things that you're fighting and you're battling with on the outside, you have to leave this place knowing that when I leave, if it's fornication, knowing that when I leave, I'm not doing it in my own strength. I'm doing it by the strength of God. If it's masturbation, I'm not doing it in my own strength, but I'm doing it by the strength of God. Not coming here and just saying, oh, you know what? The, the intercessors prayed for me, so something will happen. The intercessors prayed for me, so something will happen. It's about being intentional. Being intentional for a change. Do not get me wrong. We need change, and I'm not saying you can't come to the altar and receive miracle. But I'm saying that alone is not where the change of mind happens. Without our humility and willingness to make God's word the standard for our lives, it will not happen. All you're going to be getting is temporary fixes. You're going to be like a hamster wheel, a hamster on a wheel, having pit stops. Constantly running on this hamster wheel and stopping for a little top up. Remember the sun that melts the ice also hardens the clay. So to truly be delivered from the battles of your mind, you have to develop a hunger for God's word. You cannot be refusing God's word from having dominion in our lives, but yet expecting a change. It's time for us to stop making our minds be a sidewalk for the enemy to trample on and instead make it a disciple to the word of God. It's time for us to stop doing window shopping with God's word. Stop doing window shopping with God's word. Take the word and put it in the closet. You know, we go in the shop and times we will pick up something based on the season. We'll pick up a top and, you know, if we don't like it, we put it down because you didn't really have an intention to buy it. And we do the same thing with God's word. If we want a job, we go to the scripture that talks about, you know, um, wherever I tread with my feet, he's given me as a possession. That's when we pick up that word. Window shopping. Number two. Stop believing that you can't control your thoughts. A common lie we all tell ourselves. I've told myself that many a time. I've always been like this. This is how my mother was. This is how my father was. This is how my environment is. Oh, it's because I'm from Brixton. It's because I'm from Tottenham. It's because I'm from Hackney. And? And? Was Hackney your creator? Was Tottenham your creator? N17, N22. I've not seen anybody that can show me that on their bird paper. N22. Once I saw my son, but oh, I'm repping. I said, in which N17? In which one of the houses? Boy, look at your bird paper. There's no N17 on there. Right? So you're repping what? If you're repping anybody, you're repping me. You're not going to rep me, you're repping N17. Then you need to rep God. You need to rep God. Now, don't get it twisted. When I say that, my daughter's cringing like, uh, I used to say those words too. Don't get it twisted. I have battles with the mind. I'm not here speaking to you as somebody that is perfect or not gone through challenges. But guess what? You have to understand that you have to come to a place where you're not going to allow the enemy to tell you what he wants to do and dictate to you who you are and what you can do and what you can't do. Because he didn't make you. He is not your creator. He's not your creator. How, right. To prove that we have control of our minds. Have you ever had a time where you just have some foolish thoughts that come up in your head? It may be you're standing on the, on the underground and then you know something saying, oh, maybe if you, if you jump, man, nothing will happen. You know, you're standing at the roadside. Oh, maybe if you walk out in the road, nothing will happen. Did you do it? You didn't do it, right? So why when your mind is telling you to go and fornicate, you have to go and do it? Why when your mind is telling you to go and steal, you have to go and do it? Why? 
But yet you're telling me, oh, you go, you, after you've done it, you're telling me you don't have control of your mind. If somebody told you to go and eat poo, you weren't going to go and eat it. You weren't going to go and eat it. So why are you saying you don't have control of your mind? You don't understand. I have been, you know, I've, I've been doing all that I can. I've tried. The problem is that's the thing. The you. The you. I've tried. Have you allowed God to do what he needs to do? And that's the thing. We don't, we don't, we, we, really and truly, we don't want God to do what he wants to do. Because we enjoy what we're doing. We don't really want God to do what he wants to do. Oh yeah, I, I, I don't want to think the way I think. Lies. I'm sorry I can't speak Nigerian. Lies. All lies. I'm not going to do like Omar, try and mess it up. <laughs> I'm not looking in his direction. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> because of time, I'm moving, I'm moving. The Bible commands us of what to do. It says, it says, think about these things. What things? Philippians 4, 8. It says, finally, brothers, whatever is true. Say whatever is true. Whatever is true. How many lies has the enemy been telling you? And you've been listening to it and you know it's not true. The enemy is telling you that you're not good enough. You can't do this. And the Bible is telling us that you're already victorious because I've won the battle. The enemy is telling you that you're a thief. You're climbing through people's window. You're a royalty. You're a chosen people. You're a peculiar. Do you, you ever, have you ever seen Queen Elizabeth crawling through anybody's window? And she ain't more royal than you are. So who are you as a royalty? You're climbing through people's window because the devil has told you that that's who you are. And this I said, it's time. It's time for you to start silencing the enemy. The Bible says whatsoever is true. We are here writing, our, uh, writing off ourselves. There's some things in our life. Yes, it has become quiet. Maybe it's become stagnant. Doesn't mean that it cannot be revived, but it's not dead. Jesus said, Jairus' daughter is not, not dead. She's sleeping and people laughed. There's some things that may be sleeping in your life right now, but it's not dead. God is waiting for you to give him the opportunity to make it be revived. To make it come forward. You said, oh, when I was a little child, I was so happy. That child is still there. Allow God to revive it. It says, whatsoever is honorable. Is your thoughts deserving of honor? When you see your sister, when you see your brother on the street, are you just seeing them and envisioning them without clothes? Or are you seeing your brother and your sister that when they fall, you will be able to pick them up? Honor. And that's not just you being honored, that's honoring other people. Is your mind honoring other people by lifting them up or is your mind just tearing them down? It says whatever is just. So is your mind telling you stuff to make you be do things that is morally right? Whatsoever is pure. What's going on up here? If, there were, if it was a see-through glass, would people be running when they look? If your mind could be seen... What would they be seeing happening? The Bible has told us what to do. It says, this book of law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written. So if you're not reading the word, then how can you do according to what is written? Because you don't know what is written. You need to read it in order to be able to do what it says. Because this is the area that the puppet, the devil has us like a puppet on a string. We're busy, too busy playing table tennis with the devil. You see, our mind is not a playing ground. It's a battlefield. And you're busy up there playing table tennis. The enemy is throwing things at you and you're, you're biting it back. Oh yeah, I know. Oh, I know. And he's hitting you and you're, I know. What do you know? Playing table tennis with the devil instead of knocking back the fiery darts of the enemy with the word of God. As Christians, our duty is to stay connected to the Holy Spirit, our helper. 
Ephesians 6.10, it tells us, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. The mind is either a servant to God or it's a servant to the devil, your flesh. There's no in-between. The Bible tells us that we should not be conformed to this world, but we should be renewed, renewed. And we do that by submitting ourselves, James 4, 7. It says, submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Positive thoughts are not going to stay. They need to be assisted. Negative thoughts are not going to leave. They need to be resisted. Positive thoughts are not going to stay, but they need to be assisted. Negative thoughts are not going to leave. They need to be resisted. Submission is the key. The Bible describes the mind as a ship looking for a harbor. You cannot stop bad ships from sailing back and forth on the ocean. But you can refuse from them docking, you know, from them having docking privileges in the harbor of your mind. You can't stop a bird from flying or hovering over your head. But you have the ability to stop them from making a nest in your mind. Uncle Cole spoke about, spoke about being grateful. And many a times our mind messes us up because we don't take the time to be grateful. Grateful for what we have. We're so busy looking at what we don't have that we spend every day complaining. Complaining. The next point, as I'm moving very fastly because we're coming to a close. What you feed your mind with becomes your mindset and I want you to think about this what you feed your mind with you see yes you may say you don't have control of your mindset but you have control of your mind your mind is what gives birth to your mindset so if you have control of your mind that means you have control of what creates your mindset Ephesians six seventeen, it says and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of spirit, which is the word of God. I'm saying to you, mind the gap. So if your mind is a gap, what are you filling it with? What are you filling the gap with? You need to confess what you know and believe in the word of God and not what you feel. You see, we possess that ability to confess. When, when the devil came to tempt Jesus, he came with the word. Jesus didn't say, oh, let me, th- I'm thinking that I am not who you said I am. He declared what the word said. You cannot continue using your mouth as a thermometer, which only reads the temperature of your current condition. Allow God's word to turn your mouth into a ster- thermostat which changes the temperature of your life by confessing what God says. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And so your mind may be running here and there because there's things that you're waiting to see that you've not yet seen and you've lost hope. But as a child of God, you're not called into the pre-existence. You're called into the post-existence. You're called into the things that have not yet happened but you're trusting and believing by faith that they will. And it's that trust that is supposed to keep your heart in a place of gratitude. When your heart can stay in a place of gratitude, then your mind is able to see even the things that is not yet in front of you. You need the word in you. You have a mouth. Own who God has said you are. Spend less time on the phone gossiping and more time speaking God's word over your life. And the only way that you can do this is by being intentional, by being consistent. Remember at the beginning I said that to reboot, you need to forcefully reboot. You need to forcefully press that button. And I just want to encourage you that in all that you're doing, you need to forcefully press that button. 
as you've gone through life and as you're sitting here, there are many things and many lies that the enemy has told you. Many things that the enemy has told you. At the start of the week, I had the enemy telling me lots of things. Lots of things. And I had to stop myself and say, hold on. Who am I? Called my name. I'm Michelle Watson. Who do I belong to? I belong to God. Who is God? Because that's the problem. If you don't know who your father is, even when you declare that he is your father, you're still going to falter. If you don't know the power and the authority that your father has, you cannot claim it as a child. But when you know who your father is, you can declare and you can tell the enemy, look, you need to go back from where you're coming from. I remember going into a shop one day. I'll share this with you. I remember going into a shop one day. And you know when you, they have these boxes like with sweets and different, different things in it and people have already gone in and taken their share and one was left. And I'm like, oh, there's only one left. I, might, I, I can take it. I was like, hold on, is that stealing? The man comes back, no, 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 it's not stealing, because at the end of the day, it's just the only one that's left. You know, you take it, nothing, so everything's all right. And I had to draw myself back. I said, hold on, who are you? Are you not bigger than this thing? So imagine now, you take that one thing, you're walking through, security stop you. Then you look and you see yourself in handcuffs, mommy Mish in handcuffs, walking out of shop. I'm being for real. When Nisa said the time has come, the time has come. How long are you going to allow the enemy to be riding your mind like a horse? It's time you need to kick him off. Remind him of who you are. When he is saying that you're a loser, you're reminding that I am victorious. When he says you are sick, remind him who your father is. By his stripes, I am healed. When he says to you that you cannot do it, tell him that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. When he's telling you that you're lacking, so you need to go and steal, tell him that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Bible tells us that I will not lack any good thing. Stop allowing the enemy to caress your mind. Caress your mind. You're this, you're that, and you're loving the caress. It's time to rebuke him. It's time to put him back where he belongs. It's time for you to remind him of who you are. And I want you to be on your standing right now. And I want you to declare to God who you are. Not to God, clear, declare to the situation, the circumstances, the challenges that you're going through. Declare to it and speak to it and remind yourself of who you are in Christ Jesus. You know what is going through your mind. I can't be here and tell you what is going through your mind. You know the challenges that you're facing. You know the lies that the enemy is telling you. And as you're there, I want you to take it before the Lord. And just tell the Lord, Lord, I am here today. I'm going to be intentional. I'm going to be intentional. We may have walked in here as fornicators, as thieves, as everything, that adulterers, whatever you want to call it. But know that when you leave this place, you're leaving with the intention of knowing that when I leave this place, I'm leaving as a child of the king. And so I'm going to lift my head and walk with that royalty that God has called me to walk in. And that's why I never forget um, Rona's word when she spoke up her icon. You're an image bearer. And you walk through this door knowing that you're an image bearer. You don't leave here with the lies of the enemy. And so I want you this year, 2022, to be intentional. Be intentional. Be intentional. Mind the gap. Because if you don't mind it, that is where we are going to fall. Mind the gap. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. In this time, um, we'd like to just open up a moment. We don't want altar addicts. In Jesus' name, we don't want altar addicts. We know that we, we're a church that does a lot of intercession, a lot of prayer. We come to the front quite a bit. But we don't want to make this a circus. We don't want to make this a time where we come and we pray for you and you go back out and the same thing happens, you come back next week. 
We don't want a circus. We want today to be a day of intentionality. That we're not coming here to be addicted to the moment, but we're coming here to say, yes, Lord, I'm walking out of here with a changed mind. In Jesus' name, there is grace to change. And that word might have spoken directly to you. You might be here reflecting, thinking, I probably have spoken things over myself. I have been through a lot of things and I do probably carry a negative mindset. But right now, we can pray for the grace to change. And we can make an intentional moment right now, right here. We can do it and we can walk out. Because as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And so right now, if that's you, and I'm speaking to everybody inside this room, if you need to dump some thoughts out in order for your mind to be clear, to have a new way of thinking, this is not an altar addict moment. This is an altar changing moment in Jesus' name. Amen. And so I'm going to leave it very somber. If that's you, everyone sat down. Those of you that want to stand and come, this is your moment.